Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tosh Berman, and this is another episode of Tosh Talks. Today, I want to talk about two books, same subject matter, London, 20th Century. If you have watched my show before, or read my blog, or know anything about me, you know I have this sort of, some may say, unhealthy obsession about London and its culture. And... Um, to give you a little background why I, do, I have this thing about London, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a specific generation where I came up culturally through the, through the umbrella of the world of the Beatles, who, of course, came from England, not London, but nevertheless, England. And um, is, England was is probably the very first country outside of the United States that I was aware of. I knew there was another world out there that spoke British or spoke English like Americans, but different somehow. And I was totally, um, as a child, like around 10 or 11 years old, when the Beatles did come out, I not only was I aware of their music, but I was also aware of their origins, where they came from, which is, of course, is Liverpool. But London had a more romantic pull for me. And... I became, you know, within weeks, months after the Beatles, of course, I got into the Rolling Stones and other music. And of course, the love of the music became a love of British films and cinema and British personalities. For instance, uh, my my first crush or first love was the actress Hayley Mills, who was in a couple of Walt Disney movies, but she was, to me, a British personality, a British girl. And at the age of like 11 and 12, she was the ideal girl to me who is British. So this course led to watching her movies, but also some very great British films as well as some very bad British films. But nevertheless, the core interest always, when I get beyond the personalities or even the music, it's always England and be more specific, London. And I first went to London when I was 12 years old with my parents during the Summer of Love, um, 1967. And um, it was a great time as, a, as, a, as an American teenager, or about to be a teenager, to go into another world that I was familiar with because I read so much about it and bought so much English music. And again, I was totally obsessed with, at the time he was a 12-year-old, um, English literature, English comics. Uh, to actually be in London was, it was, I was starstruck. I was starstruck of a city, not a personality or a group of personalities, but I was, I was starstruck by the architecture of London. I was starstruck being in London. And I feel London is very much of a character in itself, a fascinating character. And, um, throughout the years and decades, there have been various great material on London, about London, um, either takes place in London or written by London authors or m- music by London musicians uh, and so on. But in the age of the internet, um, I start reading, of course, I start reading blogs of all sorts. And one of the great things about blogs is sort of the urgency. You put it up, you write it really quickly, you put up in pictures, and bingo, you're published, self-published masterpiece, quote-unquote. But the truth is, um, 90 to 95% of blogs I have read or looked at are, even though they're interesting, maybe subject matter, they're not either well-written or well-produced or well-edited. Um, until... I discovered a blog called Another Nickel in the Machine. And later, when you see this video, I'm going to put the, uh, the, um, the website address below the YouTube um, um, page. But Another Nickel in the Machine is a blog put together by a gentleman by the name of Rob Baker. And Rob Baker, what he does is write about London culture 20th century or 20th century London, and uh, which means he covers London from, like, say, like, 1919 to, like, 1970. 
Um, and it's absolutely incredibly fascinating because he writes about specific people. Some are very famous, like Charlie Chaplin or No Coward, uh, and, and members of royalty, too, like totally obscure people who are just sort of passing through the narrative. Or there were once stars of, of great fame, but now, in the 21st century, they're not spoken about or uh, they're totally unheard. And Rob Baker brilliantly writes about these figures in the context of what is London, as well as what was London, because London has changed due for many reasons. Specifically, the biggest change physically was doing was during the bombings uh, during World War II, which uh, totally changed the landscape of uh, of that city as well as other cities in, in England. But um, but Baker records the the changes and the differences because when you look at when you look at the blog, he he. He, he, he's, a, he's brilliant at finding photographs that I've never seen before. If you go to his blog, you're going to see photographs of people and London, and more likely, unless you're some type of, you work in the photo agency that has these photographs, you've probably never seen these photographs before. So his skills of finding the perfect image to go with his perfect narrative of that city is exceptional. And, um, and it seems like the main interest which, that, that Rob Baker has, um, I'll just say Rob Baker together, because sort of like saying Bill Murray instead of Bill or Murray. I just want to say Rob Baker because it's sort of a perfect name. And Rob Baker, what he does is actually he focuses <clears throat> uh, mostly, if not exclusively, on, on showbiz life in London as well as architectural buildings and structures that sort of comes within the narrative of the, of, of, of the, of the story, and a lot of times gangsters of all sorts, specifically the Cray twins come to my, uh, my mind, uh, uh, Reggie and Roddy Cray, who, as you know, or you don't know, but if you, again, if you read my blog and you have watched his show, you know I have, a sort of a, I have sort of a unhealthy interest in the craze. Why, I do not know. I have a thing about identical twins who are criminals and killers. I'm kind of attached, attached to people who have no morals whatsoever and are here to basically just to destroy and ruin lives. It's wrong. But that's the fact. That's the truth of the matter. But Rob Baker um, focused on the cray world. You know, everybody has like, they're, they're like there's one personality or two personalities in each narrative but it's like the root you know it's like it's like you 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 look at and you read about the craze or read about Charlie Chaplin or no coward just for example you're not just reading about them as individuals but you're reading about their world and that is what's interesting it's like you read you look at the craze not just because Ronnie and Reggie one is gay one is straight or bisexual or, bi or both bisexual that's interesting because how they use their sexuality is very much part of their power and part of their story, their narrative. And with any great story, you have a great cast of characters. So the craze themselves, when you study that, you're getting incredible cast of characters of all sorts. The same with Charlie Chaplin, the same with um, No Coward, same with Graham Greene, and various minor uh, not in talent, but uh, uh, minor and not, you know, like the stars who are, who are not really well known now, but even they are fascinating and who they hung out with and where they lived in London and what they dealt with is totally incredible. And, you know, it, it's hard enough to talk about this on the show because I, 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 I want to do this particular episode for like a week, but I had a hard time thinking how can I express and relate to you why Rob Baker's website is so fantastic. And again, it's because he takes all these stories and expands them somehow. He expands the stories to give you a bigger landscape, and that bigger landscape being London. Because London itself, as I mentioned, is a character. It's as much as a character 
as the craze, Charlie Chaplin, no coward, etc., and etc. So Rob Baker has a fascination, or he talks about all the vices, all the drugs, the sexuality, the early pornography made in, 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 in the city of London, the sex scandals, which became the political scandals, and there was also a lot of politics involved in his uh, blog as well. But it's, it's, it's not politics like who did what. It's not like about the mechanics of passing a bill or, or, or opposition or for something. It's more about how politics is sort of a criminal enterprise itself and how politicians are just as fascinating as the Cray twins. In fact, perhaps the Cray twins would not exist without a politician and a politician could not exist without the Crays and showbiz figures. And that's another aspect of Rob Baker's book that I'm fa totally fascinated with is the knowing the chain of events, that the, the linkage between these human beings that really can't exist by themselves unless there are other people involved. And, as I, and again, everyone in these stories are, are absolutely fascinating and important figures. Some, or most, are totally tragic. Many suicides, many drug deaths, many OD'd, many... You know, it goes on and on, you know, and, and like, you know, the most contemporary story, I'm going to give you the story and narrative because you should read the, you should read the blog and the book, which I'll get to you a little bit later in a second. But there's like a chapter on, on, on the flat where Keith Moon died, which is the same flat that Mama Cass Elliot and Mama and Papa's died. Uh, both, I believe, were overdosed or Mama Cass maybe had a heart attack. Nevertheless, it was rented out by Harry, Harry uh, Nilsson, the singer, the great American pop singer. And we all know the connection of that, but I never read a chapter on these three guys. I don't, for, in one chapter, you get such a full picture of these three characters and how their lives interweaned, intertwined, excuse me, and how they connect to each other, which is not hard to believe because they're all musicians and stuff like that. But Rob Baker really gives a complete picture of that world at that time. And Baker also goes beyond that with the other chapters on different individuals about um, a like an early 1920s crooner who um, was, a, was a sort of like a teen idol of his time, totally not knowledgeable now, nobody knows who he is. But he's one of the first crooners in England, similar to like Bean Crosby. And um, that whole chapter is really about London being bombed. So you get this crooner, and you get Graham Greene. London being bombed. That's the, that's the landscape. Does Graham Greene know the entertainer? No. But they're in the same chapter together. They experience the same bombings. And... At one time, there was a huge bombing that hundreds had died, if not a thousand. And I never actually read about this, strangely enough. You always hear about bombings in a very non-specific way, you know, that it happened. But this specific bombing is our, it was called a parachute bomb that the Germans threw out of the planes. And the parachute bomb is a bomb that explodes above the landscape, above the ground. There's certain bombs that hit the ground, and that causes a certain type of destruction. But there's also the parachute bomb, which actually explodes above the ground and causes a different type of explosion. And the singer, this obscure singer, um, who considered himself lucky because he never even he walked by bombs and the blowback, if that's the terminology, went the wrong direction, went the other direction, lucky for him. Like somebody like Three feet away from him, got killed, but not him. He got totally not touched at all. But eventually what happened, he was a victim of the parachute bomb where he didn't feel the explosion. But when the bomb exploded, his door in his bedroom, I believe, not blew up, but the force of the bomb caused the door to break and thrush towards him and it killed him. The, the door actually killed him. So in a sense, he was not killed by the actual explosion itself, but the force of the explosion killed him. And Graham Greene, the writer, and his mistress at the time, 
uh, which means he was married and he was living with his mistress, um, was talking about the same night. And his situation was, is that he had to find, a, him and his, his mistress were hungry. So trying to find food at nighttime during a bombing raid is not exactly easy. And um, so in this one chapter, you get Graham Greene trying to find a good dinner. And the other part of this chapter is this singer who got smashed by his bedroom door. And, and you know, Rob Rett Baker, you know, there's like memoirs or autobiographies. And Rob Baker is actually is great because he's a researcher. You know, he, he researches from reading a lot of books, not reading the Internet or reading web, other people's websites. But if you look at the bibliography, it's quite large on the title of books that he's, he's gone through and researched and read. And he's a, he knows how to tell a big story using all these fascinating characters, these great characters, in a narrative that's incredibly enjoyable and, and fascinating. And from that blog, he has put out two books. One is called Beautiful Idiots and Brilliant Lunatics. That's the cover here. And a brand new book just came out. This was about two years ago, like 2015. A brand new edition came out, a new book of his called High Buildings, Low Morales. Great title. And if I may quote to you, um, he got the title from No Coward. This name comes up again and again because No Coward is a very big London figure. So here's a qu quote from No Coward. I don't know what London's coming to. The higher the buildings, the lower the morales. Which actually is probably the most brilliant architectural critique I've ever read or thought about. The bigger the buildings, the lower the morale gets, or morals get. And um, these books are, are published by um, Amberley Press. They're like a small British press that I think focuses on, on hardcore British history. So these books are not that easy to find, but you can find them. Uh, they are distributed in the U.S., and you can locate them. You can special order them at your bookstore, or you, of course, do it online. But uh, I think your individual neighborhood bookstore, you could just go there with the title, of, you know, the author, Rob Baker, and these two books you can get easily. So, again, the book is by Rob Baker. It's Beautiful Idiots and Brilliant Lunatics, Volume 1. And Volume 2 is High Buildings, Low Morals. And again, I, and this, again, the, uh, not again, but the material compiled in these two volumes is from the blog. So you may ask yourself, why do I need to buy these two books after reading the blog? Um, well, one, he re-edited the writing. He added more stories to the book. So the book is really more complete than the blog. But you should go to the blog to get a taste of this guy's brilliance and in, 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 in the way he writes about it urban hist uh, history of a city. And if you don't find this fascinating, there's no reason for you to even talk to me. London, and I don't even love, I don't even, I mean, I love, I love London culture. I don't, I've been to London many times, and I don't always love the city. But it never, ever, boring to me in a culture wise. It's one of the most fascinating cities to walk through. Incredible history, of course, through Rob Baker and other writers. There's been other great books on, on London. But Rob Baker's uh, two books on London to me are, are, are you, you must have. And um, this is Tosh Berman. This is Tosh Talks. And I will be seeing you in the near future. Thank you very much.